So first, I just want to know a little bit about like your background and how because everybody, what I think people really struggle to do or like to do is to like see people from similar backgrounds and be like, okay, you know, I'm not crazy. I'm not alone. Like I can do this. So could you maybe just describe a little bit about your background and like why you decided to do your PhD? My background, uh, I definitely came in from a practitioner role. Uh, versus someone who's actually in research and academia. I realized I wanted to do a PhD when I kept coming back to like the similar same set themed, like the similar themed set of questions over the past. Um, I, I worked for like five, six plus years um, in the relevant field. Um, and I think I realized that over time that like I I thought a lot more I guess, philosophically about um, these types, the types of challenges that I was facing. And I knew that this, like the set of challenges that I was facing in my roles, like it's something that it's like universal across the field. Um, So, and that there's like no clear set of answers to it. So um, yeah, I think I, I really was prompted by that. I've always thought of going back to school for a while too, but I just, I just wasn't sure if it was it because it's a huge commitment. Um, but I think I just had so many different, I actually came back to a uh, advisor. Um, it was like an undergraduate advisor. Like I, I kept going back to him, like at least like a few years at a time, like even after graduating of like, sh- should I go, go back into my PhD? And like every time he said no, and then I think the last time that he's, I think he just said like, oh, don't do it if you don't need it. Um, and then I think the last time that I went back to him, he was like, you know what, <laughs> you should just do it. If, you, if you're if you thinking about this much, don't do a PhD if you don't think um, you need it. Um, but I think, um, I think I just had all the signs to do it um, in terms of like that curiosity and wanting to solve these questions. Um, but yeah, it came from practitioner background and, um, I guess when I realized I wanted to do it, um, did you have your master's before you started? I did. I did. Um, I did my undergrad, then master's right after, and then just like was working through, um, industry. Um, but yeah. Did you have a ton of research experience? I didn't realize (laughs) in some ways, like, um, I had some undergraduate research experience, um, but it was through like a honors thesis class. It wasn't really through um, like a formal research job sure. that you would do part time. Um, so I just I didn't consider it okay as research in that sense, but. Um, just because I didn't like publish that paper, it was yeah. like, um, but it was like something that I, I did want to just do out of curiosity. Um, but I think in my roles that I've had as an operator or practitioner, like mm-hmm. I've um I've definitely done research in different capacities. I realized I needed to have more experience and um I kind of wanted to use it, um, find ways to get experience as a way to just like sanity check (laughs) this is actually something that I want to do if like if I hate it then I then I shouldn't do it but I actually really enjoyed it as I was um I reached out to um professors um in aligned fields um from my alma mater okay and um and like they were really awesome about um giving me opportunities to just like help out and um, test stuff out yeah and um I think from there I actually ended up getting RA work um, elsewhere. So I think it was just like testing things out little by little for a lot of it. Oh, that's great. So they gave you kind of like, cause like from afar, so they gave you like digital work that you could do. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Cause I think a lot of people get hung up of like, well, I'm not near a university or, or whatnot. And so I can't get any more experience. And so I love that you were able to do that. Yeah. No, thank you. I mean, it's definitely helpful with uh, remote work, um, especially post COVID, sadly. Yeah. But um, I think, um, but no, I think it was definitely a huge advantage. And I think, like, I think one of the most um, overlooked things that, like, I would assume people might 
go through is that like they don't realize that they have the existing resources already like from their own experiences in school yeah. um too like I think for some of the people like I didn't even have classes with them but like my work that I did mm-hmm. like as a practitioner what was like the frustration you were dealing with before you started working with us like what what was going on I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> I was just like googling all day I was asking chat GPT like what do I do like <laughs> to apply for a PhD program and you probably have a better record of this um I think I reached out or like signed up for something like fall 22 2022 I knew that I needed to um just like keep myself accountable I think having something like fearless grad it um it's really helpful for the accountability side of things just because like when you're working and when you're trying to explore research and when you're just like trying to keep up with like everyday life <laughs> the call times just like it never worked out with my schedule oh, and, and like no no no, it's not it's not like it's not like a, a bad thing like the resources online the slack group like I I got a lot out of that knowing that there's like this is like a step-by-step guide for like how to do it I, helpful um especially in like a not so straightforward career the process can be super nebulous and so yeah we try to like let you guys get your arms around it. And then little by little, you felt like the Fearless Grad program was like starting to work for you. you There were several times like from, oh, this is how I should be thinking about planning out comparing the schools and programs. Like there was that one spreadsheet um, in that planning process that was really helpful. I had my own crazy spreadsheet that was just like organized chaos. <laughs> and this one just like organized and like it could just like kind of like think more clearly. Um, but I think also um when I was in my um SOP review process, having feedback from people who are in academia who are like current students that was really helpful um just to really get a better sense the SOP especially it's like I mean I think the way you described it um in like one of your videos it's like it's one of it's like probably one of the most defining things of the application um and I mean that's a lot of weight (laughs) on one thing (laughs) I don't want to like stress anybody out um it just uh, yeah it's it's a weird document because it's technical and marketing. So you like you have to show that you can write technically well, but you also have to market yourself and your ideas. So it's like writing a technical paper would be easier, right? right. Like, but yeah, that's a fun one. Well, I'm so glad that the writing went well because it is, it's also a process, right? It's not just like, boop, we're done. I think also just like financial constraints. I was like, I don't know if like I need to like, get like the additional tier above I was just like you know I'm just gonna like make the most out of what I have and go with it yeah. but like looking back I'm like um I, I think that could also could have been like super helpful so like but the thing is that I do think everyone's like probably at different places with like where they are in the application process like I came in like with zero <laughs> pretty much but I think like I know that the support that you and your team offered was just invaluable. So I wish I I, le- I leveraged more of it looking back, um, but I'm still grateful to be part of, I'm, just, I'm grateful to be where I am and I'm grateful for the community and everything. We pack a lot in there because you all live different lives. So some people, like I have a client who worked midnights and she would always watch our replays. And then she would like ask, she would like say, okay, hey, she was like, hey, can you answer this question? And then I would answer it and then she would watch it. So it's like, and some people will never be on Slack. Some people will be on Slack every day. We want you to get what you need and like not. For sure. Yeah, cool. Um, What else? What was something surprising that you learned either about yourself or like about the PhD process in general? I actually had research experience that I wasn't aware that I could like spin it off as for me it was just like um like a rigorous like research process like I didn't have a published paper what I didn't know like how I could actually like spin it off as be like and say like I am capable of like fully executing um because it's like you can't really cite a I don't know can you cite a paper that hasn't been published like like in a journal like that like I don't know um but then I think whoever I was working with, um, they mentioned that um, 
you could like I think like I was like a lead investigator and like I completed IRB um approval for that yeah. as well too and like I think I think I didn't I never thought of it as that but I mean it was like an independently written thing yeah. and I mean like I did the work and it was like a, it was actually a substantial paper but I didn't I never framed it as or thought of that in my okay. mind like, I think like I don't know I think the program really gave me like um a better more clear view of like kind of I've been so pre-programmed to view um myself like not as a researcher hmm. for this um and I mean I feel like I'm being, I'm, I'm still playing catch up <laughs> essentially people have this like view of what a researcher is like somebody who's been like sitting in a lab for 10 years and has like 10 papers and like just you know does research 40 hours a week versus like well I only did part-time this or this that and like that counts to get into your PhD because like the bar is not to have your PhD right like if you you know if you had that you would you'd already be done with your PhD so like it's yeah it's kind of reminding to to draw out what you already have which is really cool that's good for sure um so how many schools did you apply to um I applied to um 10 and I got into six um so I got interviews at like at all of them as well too okay Um, or not all not all 10 but But like all um, all, all those six yeah um how did it how did the interview process go was it in person online yeah they're all online um I don't know if anyone's had any in person I'm like so curious about that actually I think going through I I was on that session for the interviews like the group call and that was so helpful like just kind of sanity check with like other people like oh this is how like I mean, we were doing like mock interviews and like the mock interviews helped a lot, um, like framing some parts of um, like, like something as simple as like, how do you introduce yourself? How to frame your research compared to like inspiration. That was really helpful. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. okay, awesome. Oh, so wait, what schools did you get into? You didn't tell me. Yeah. yeah. And then I got into, I'm applying for, um, programs focused on like sustainability, um, corporate social responsibility, like research that focuses on like how do companies, firms um, really make the most impact essentially and like incentivize that. USC, um, CU Boulder, UNC, Chapel Hill, Amherst, um, BU. It's actually five, but like I'm like waiting to hear back from the last one. Um, so I got um I have an interview. I had an interview at U of Michigan. I think I'm like shortlisted, but like we'll see. I'm and- telling myself it'll be a six, but um probably. yeah. So where do you think you'll accept? Probably USC. Um, I think I think Michigan's up there, but then um if if it's not, I mean. I think it varies. Honestly, there's so many things to vary, but I think USC and then Colorado are like my top choices at the moment. Um, I think just especially with like the faculty fit and like the interview process and everything like that illuminated so much. Like I think just in terms of like, I think what to look for in faculty. It's a two way street. Like, yeah. I, I yeah, I really hope that everybody takes advantage of that time to find what they need okay well what was like your what was your favorite part about the fearless grad program I really enjoyed connecting with the people like whether it's like the people on the team or the people who um like were on the calls um or like even just through slack with some people as well too I I just read about this topic or this like this topic called like shared fate um and and it's basically like this idea that's like you're all going through it together and however you all perform like perform collectively that influences like the ultimate outcome oh. the fact that we're all in a similar state we all have like the similar set of challenges we're facing like I do feel like it feels like everyone's like on the same team of like we all want to get into these programs and I think the fact that it's like a diverse group of people too it feels like very 
it feels a lot more collaborative than like if I knew that this and that person were all applying for the same program it feels kind of scary you know but I think to get a diverse perspective of like across fields it's like there's a lot of more similar themes and you would expect to so an engineering person can help a psychology person and like vice versa and like I like that the fact that people don't have like their labels or whatever of like what they're applying for immediately like like on their slack profile or whatever like I feel like that just makes it like more humanizing Good. like it's okay if they introduce themselves as whatever sure. but like I think like you're just talking to other people who are trying to do the same thing and like right. there's something really nice about that what was like a low point through the process for you? Because right, there are ups and downs. Anything that brought you down and how did you come out of it? I think preparing for the GRE, but that, that's less of something covered here. I've never identified as like the best test taker, but like like a decent enough one. And I think like it was really hard for me to get through it. Um, Like I, I got like, a, honestly, I had like a really average score. Like it wasn't anything like phenomenal. I was like 60th percent. I don't know, somewhere between like 60. Okay. I spent so many hours once they get into wherever. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I was just like really worried that like I want to get in anywhere. I have a good experienced background, but the thing is that it's like, I don't want like a silly little number to like, screen me out. Um, But I think like, I think going through this program I think just like it was like it was one of the modules or maybe even something you posted on Instagram like I don't know <laughs> it was something yeah. in between there like I think you kind of mapped out like this is how much the GRE is actually accounted for versus everything mm -hmm. else I'm gonna remind myself that <laughs> and keep my fingers crossed um, as I was talking to faculty members as I was getting to know them before applying to and that was also super helpful to like kind of see the process from other people as I was having these conversations with faculty before um the inter before the application submission and interview process they were like oh yeah like I mean we kind of account for it but like it's not as much um as you might think and um I think that was to actually have I think first have the courage to talk to these people and then have them validate that I think like um it kind of just like shattered this perception that like most people would have around like how much gravity there is around I felt more confident in, like this the process and like enjoyed the process more of like oh I get to talk to a new faculty this week I'm like reading their research and mm -hmm. um and like leave the score behind and then just like focus on the other things that we have more control of mm -hmm. um but yeah I love that. You, you can't you be in your own head. You're just not going to have a good connection. The first one was a little creaky and then you probably got better and better. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, that's cool. Um, well, I'm glad. Okay. Well, the, net, I'm glad the networking was fun because I think people get stressed about that. Do you think you would have networked as much if you hadn't been in the program? I, I, I don't think I would network as much. No. Um, I think... Um, I'm also just trying to line up like when did I first reach out to faculty and when did I start the program too. I actually did reach out to faculty and like these are faculty that like I knew when I was like thinking about like new people like cold I had like zero clue what to write um and I think having like a structure and just like knowing things to say like at a really high level it's a lot harder to talk about yourself I come from like an entrepreneurial background too so like I mean, like in theory I would like know how to like talk about this stuff too but like it was still really difficult that makes perfect sense because like I think everybody has that like I'd rather talk about a project versus myself because like a project is not me right? would you recommend it for this grad program to others and if so why Oh, definitely. To have a community to go through, um, like such a rigorous, uncertain process. I think that's so important. A lot of personally speaking, like I've been through things with community and without community. And like, I just know how much of a difference that community makes. The PhD journey, like once you're accepted, it's already so lonely. Um, And like to get in is <laughs> probably just as lonely too. And like, I think to have a group of people to kind of resonate with um, and like see that we're asking like similar themed questions on Slack. You would all often like mention um, like 
you know, you, you can have a life <laughs> outside of this whole process. And like, I think that was so important. Like just put in all the hours po as possible. It's like, but no, I think it's like, it's a journey. It's not a sprint. Um, as, I think as you mentioned, it's a great blueprint to have. The step-by-step -step is like really well outlined. Um, the modules are helpful too. You have really, like, really great, straightforward to the point stuff. Okay. So I, I really appreciated it. Um, it felt like a very intimate type of program where it's like, oh, wow, these people are really like devoting like a lot of time and care to every single person. So it's like, it's very personalized, very intimate. Um, I appreciate that we are there as much as we can, you know, but we know that everybody has their own, you know, life. And so some people are doing different stuff, but yeah, we we care, we get into it. We, we care. <laughs> like the whole team is really, really great. So I appreciate you saying that. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I really mean it. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else you want to share about like, you know, just starting the process in general or folks going through this? I didn't think it was a big factor in me deciding to go with the program. She was very, she went through your program and um, is now working with you. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, I think that speaks so highly. They actually like become part of it. Like, I think that's really, I think that was actually like a really strong selling point. Um, it's it's like something beyond words. They really like the program. They really like the way it, it works and they like working with the people and they, yeah, well, I appreciate that. I, yeah, I love my team and like, I do spend energy with that, you know, I spend energy everywhere. You don't even need to like do the marketing, you know, it's like they, I think their presence is like the value of the program. Yeah, it's really cool. It's super cool. Thank you. Okay. Well, appreciate it.